Nefertiti is one of the most popular individuals from ancient Egypt. One of the reasons we don't know a great deal about Nefertiti and her family is because they were erased from history. The silence of the desert just got shattered by a, a computer program that can read the dead. Nefertiti has been a ghost for 30 centuries, but quantum AI just mapped her entire genome from a battered mummy. The results explain why she evaporated from the timeline in the middle of her reign. We are looking at a story of secret queens and a bloodline so pure it became toxic. This discovery reveals a hidden world where power and biological failure collided. The queen did not just leave, she was wiped from existence. And that is putting it lightly. Royal DNA reveals a dark truth. Nefertiti is hands down one of the most popular individuals from ancient Egypt, but one of the reasons we do not know a great deal about her is because she was erased. Everyone is obsessed with the golden mask of King Tut. But here is the catch. The real story is not about the boy king, but the woman who came before him. On the basis of the genetics and also what we can glean from the textual data from the period, the most likely outcome is that the younger lady is Nefertiti. For over 3,000 years, Queen Nefertiti has been a silent icon frozen in time. But that silence just got shattered. On the basis of the genetics and what we can glean from the textual data of the period, the most likely outcome is that a mummy known as the younger lady is actually Nefertiti. Modern science has finally done the unthinkable. By using quantum AI to analyze the microscopic history hidden within ancient bone, researchers have found something that is absolutely terrifying. We are talking about a legacy of biological devastation, secret chambers, and a queen who might have been hiding in plain sight this whole time. The Golden Empire did not just decline, it vanished overnight. To understand why this DNA discovery is so shocking, you first have to understand the sheer magnitude of what was lost. Nefertiti was not just a queen. She was a co-ruler and a goddess on Earth, who stood shoulder to shoulder with her husband, Pharaoh Akhenaten. Together, they did something that had never been done before. They dismantled the old gods and moved the entire capital city to a remote, hostile patch of desert called Amarna. It was a religious revolution. For a few fleeting years, they were the center of the universe. They lived in a golden city of white stone and shimmering heat. Art from this period shows them as a loving, intimate family holding their six daughters. It paints a picture of domestic perfection and absolute power. They were the ultimate power couple rewriting the rules of reality itself. But it is not that simple though. There is something deeply unsettling about the art from this era. If you look closely at the statues of Akhenaten and even some depictions of Nefertiti, they do not look like typical humans. They have elongated skulls, distended bellies, wide hips, and spider-like fingers. For decades, fringe theorists have gone wild with this. They say Nefertiti and her husband were visitors from the stars. While that sounds like science fiction, the reality hiding in their genes is even stranger. Just as their power reached its peak, the record stopped cold. It is one of history's greatest vanishing acts. Around the twelfth year of the reign, Nefertiti simply evaporates. One day she is leading processions, and the next she is gone. There is no record of her passing and no tomb ever found. For centuries, historians assumed she fell out of favor, but the lack of evidence has always felt intentional, like a crime scene that had been scrubbed clean. Their names were chiseled out of walls, and the city was abandoned. It was as if the desert itself was ordered to swallow them whole. What most people do not realize is that the ancient Egyptians believed that if you spoke a dead person's name, you kept them alive. Conversely, to destroy a name was to destroy the soul eternally. It was a fate worse than death. Someone wanted Nefertiti gone from eternity. They wanted to make sure she could never navigate the underworld. For decades, archaeologists have been sifting through the sands desperate for a clue. They found plenty of mummies, but the great royal wife remained a ghost. She was the most famous woman in the ancient world, yet she was nowhere to be found. The mystery of her disappearance became the holy grail of Egyptology. But science has finally caught up with history. Quantum AI has begun to process the raw data from the bones found in the Valley of the Kings, and the results are finally shedding light on where she went. The mystery deepens when we look at the physical evidence left behind in the dark corners of forgotten tombs. Biological Costs of a Pure Bloodline Deep within the Valley of the Kings, explorers were stumbling upon tombs that did not fit the narrative. The valley is a place of death and silence where the pharaohs hoped to sleep forever. 
but it is also a place of chaos. In 1817, an explorer named Giovanni Belzoni discovered a tomb known as KV-21. Inside, intruders found two female mummies stripped of their wrappings and left to rot in the darkness. They were nameless and in such bad shape that no one paid them much attention. One had her arm crossed over her chest in the queen's pose, but with no name, she was just a body. One of them would eventually become a focal point of this modern investigation. But there was another discovery that would prove even more pivotal. In 1898, a tomb was opened that contained a cache of royal mummies hidden away by priests. Amidst the great kings of old, there were three unwrapped bodies dumped unceremoniously in a side chamber. One of them was the younger lady. The younger lady was a tragic sight. She had been brutally damaged and her chest was smashed. Her right arm was missing and there was a horrific hole in her face. For over a century, she was a museum curiosity. People walked past her glass case, unaware they might be looking at the most powerful woman of the 18th dynasty. It was not until 2010 that researchers used genetics to build the family tree of King Tut. They took samples from the bone marrow of these anonymous mummies. The results that came back from the lab sent shockwaves through the entire community. The DNA proved that the younger lady was not just some random person. She was the biological mother of King Tut and the full sister of the mummy found in KV-55. Now, the mummy in KV-55 is almost certainly Akhenaten. This revelation narrowed down the possibilities. We knew Tut's father was Akhenaten, so his mother had to be someone important. But here is the snag. Nefertiti was never known as Akhenaten's sister. History records her as likely being the daughter of a high-ranking court official. So, we are left with a massive contradiction. Was the younger lady actually Nefertiti and history got her lineage wrong? It would not be the first time ancient propaganda misled us. Or was she someone else entirely? Some theories suggest she could be a secondary wife or perhaps one of the king's own daughters, but the facial reconstruction of the younger lady bears a striking, haunting resemblance to the famous bust of Nefertiti. The high cheekbones and the jawline are identical. Is it possible that the DNA is telling us a truth we are afraid to accept? That Nefertiti was actually the king's sister all along? If so, their union was genetically disastrous. The quantum AI analysis did not just give us names, it gave us a medical chart that reads like a horror story. When scientists mapped the genome, they found a distinct and terrifying lack of genetic diversity. The ancient royals were obsessed with keeping their bloodline pure to mimic the gods. But biology does not care about royal titles. Biology punishes lack of diversity. The genetic profile of Tut and his mother showed a massive accumulation of harmful genes. We are talking about skeletal deformities, club feet, and immune systems that were practically non-existent. Basically, the entire family was walking on eggshells. They were fragile and sickly. The scan of the younger lady revealed that she likely suffered from a condition that made her bones incredibly brittle. This explains why Akhenaten looked so strange. He was not an alien. He was a walking collection of genetic errors. And if Nefertiti was his sister, she carried the same time bomb in her cells. The secrets of her health reveal a family struggling to survive their own royal traditions. How the queen really met her end. This context changes everything about the violence found on her body. The massive wound to her face was originally thought to be the work of looters digging for gold. Looters were brutal and would rip heads off to get to jewelry. But modern forensic analysis suggests something far more sinister. The scans show that the wound has specific characteristics that differ from damage caused after passing. Some experts argue there are signs of a bone reaction that suggests it happened right around the time of her end. If this mummy is Nefertiti, she did not pass away peacefully in her sleep. That blow to the face would have been fatal. It suggests she was struck with a heavy blunt object with immense force. Given the fragile nature of her bones revealed by the DNA, such a blow would have been catastrophic. It paints a picture of a violent conclusion, perhaps a political elimination. Let's get wild for a second. Consider the political climate. Akhenaten had destroyed the economy and alienated the army. People were furious. When he died, Nefertiti was left holding the bag. Did the priests of Amun, eager to restore their power, corner the queen in her palace? Did a general decide that the only way to save Egypt was to silence her forever? The smashed mouth is symbolic. In ancient Egypt, you need your mouth to speak the spells in the afterlife. 
Smashing the mouth was to make sure she could never speak to the gods again. And here is where the terrifying aspect of the DNA really hits home. It is not just about the violence she suffered, it is about the legacy she passed on. The DNA of the two fetuses found in King Tut's tomb shows the end of the line. They were stillborn due to the compounding genetic errors passed down from the parents. The bloodline did not just end, it collapsed under its own weight. There is another wild theory that the plague mentioned in texts from this time was not just a normal sickness. Some researchers speculate that the royal family's practices made them patient zeros for a specific genetic vulnerability. Perhaps the very first recorded instance of a biologically amplified plague wiping out a dynasty happened right here. If the younger lady is indeed Nefertiti, her DNA links her to this tragic cycle of deformity and death. She was not just a ruler, she was a victim of the very tradition she upheld. But there is a twist in the timeline that makes this even more complex. Before King Tut took the throne, there was a shadowy pharaoh named Smenkara who ruled for a very short time. For decades, scholars assumed this was a man, but the evidence is starting to point in a different direction. What if Smenkara was not a man at all? What if Nefertiti did not die in year 12? The theory goes that she elevated herself to the status of co-regent, taking on a new name, and eventually ruled as a full king. There are clues scattered all over the place. Inscriptions show a figure with the double crown of a pharaoh, but with the distinct hips of a woman. Some of the burial goods found in King Tut's tomb show signs of being reworked. The face on the gold mask of Tut has fascinated art historians because it looks distinctly feminine. It has pierced ears which kings did not typically have. Did Tut inherit his stepmother's burial gear because she died suddenly, or because her memory was being erased? The theory suggests that Nefertiti ruled as a king to hold the empire together, while Tut was just a child. But this rule would have been the final straw for the priests. Do you think the battered younger lady is really the lost queen Nefertiti? Or is her true tomb still waiting behind a hidden wall? Drop your thoughts below. Like and subscribe.